Where do we come from? What should we do? And where are we going? Why are we here? Well, that is the ultimate question, isn't it? What is reality? These are questions. These are addressing questions um, um, of how the world feels to us, of, of whether there's a difference between the way the world feels to us and the way it really is. Have you ever thought about what thoughts are made of? I think some of the things we're seeing with the children today is a sign that the culture is in the wrong paradigm and not appreciating the power of thought. Every age, every generation has its built-in assumptions that the world is flat, that the world is round, etc. There are hundreds of hidden assumptions, things we take for granted that may or may not be true. Of course, in the vast majority of cases, historically, these things aren't true. So presumably, if history is any guide, much about what we take for granted about the world simply isn't true. But we're locked into these precepts without even knowing it oftentimes. That's a paradox. Modern materialism strips people of the need to feel responsible. And often enough, so does religion. Asking yourself these deeper questions opens up new ways of being in the world. It's time to get wise. Is it possible that we're so conditioned to our daily lives, so conditioned to the way we create our lives, that we buy the idea that we have no control at all? We've been conditioned to believe that the external world is more real than the internal world. This new model of science is just the opposite. It says what's happening within us will create what's happening outside of us. Philosophers in the past that said, look, if I, if I kick a rock and I, and I hurt my toe, that's real. You know, I feel that, it, it feels real, it's vivid, and uh, that, re that means that it's reality. Uh, but it's still an experience, and it's still this person's perception of it being real. Scientific experiments have shown that if we take a person and uh, uh, hook their brains up to certain PET scans or computer technology and ask them to look at a certain object and they watch certain areas of the brain light up and then they've asked them to close their eyes and now imagine that same object and when they imagine that same object it produced the same areas of the brain to light up as if they were actually visually looking at it so it caused scientists to back up and ask this question so who sees then? Does the brain see? Or do the eyes see? And what is reality? Is reality what we're seeing with our brain? Or is reality what we're seeing with our eyes? And it asks the question, what is reality? We're bombarded by huge amounts of information and it's coming into our body and we're processing it, coming in through our sense organs. It's percolating up and up and at each step we're eliminating information. And finally what is bubbling up to consciousness is the one that's the most self-serving. The brain processes 400 billion bits of information a second, but we're only aware of 2,000 of those. But our awareness of those 2,000 bits of information we're living in a world where all we see is the tip of the iceberg. The classical tip of an immense quantum mechanical iceberg. Create reality. Or reality producing machines. We create the effects of reality all the time. There is no out there, out there, independent of what's going on in here. It's not what we have long thought it to be. Scientist matter has always been thought of as sort of the ultimate in that which is static and predictable. Within all the atoms and molecules, all the space within that, the particles take up an insignificant amount of the, of the volume of an atom or molecule, the fundamental particles. The rest of it is vacuum. There's a great mystery called the mystery of the direction of time. There's a certain sense in which the fundamental laws of physics that we have don't make any dis interesting distinction, say, between past and future. Um, for example, it's a puzzle from the standpoint of the fundamental laws of physics. Why, should, why we should be able to um, remember the past 
um, um, and not have the same kind of epistemic access to the future. It's a puzzle from the standpoint of these laws why we should think something like, by acting now, we can affect the future but not the past. These things, that we have a different kind of epistemic access to the past and the future, that we have a different kind of control by acting now over the future than we do over the past, these things are so fundamental.